and welcome back to 365 Days with MXM Tune. I'm Maya, a singer, songwriter, video maker, Oakland native, and former child. I'm also a huge fan of history. I love untold stories, gross facts, hidden secrets, anything weird, dark, and funky from the past. Each day, I'm going to share a few of my favorite deep cuts with you, so let's take a look at today's story. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365. Today, in 1958, the Lego brick was patented. But let's reverse, because Lego existed long before the patent, and it's a fascinating ride. The founder of Lego was named Ole Kirk Christensen. The idea of Lego was a long time coming for Mr. Christensen. He'd been into children's toys based on carpentry ever since the 1920s, when he purchased a woodworking business in Billund, Denmark. During the Great Depression, he began producing miniatures of the things the company already made, like stepladders and stools, as well as wooden toy designs to keep the business afloat during troubled times. It worked out for him. By using waste materials to make new products instead of throwing things away, he was able to survive the austerity of the Great Depression in Europe. In 1934, he held a contest for his staff to name his toy business. Lego won the contest, which is derived from the Danish word leg got, which means play well. Play well, indeed. Christensen had expanded the business to 10 men by 1939, and expanding your business was not an easy thing to do during the Great Depression. He was definitely a skilled businessman. During World War II, he went on to quadruple that workforce. When the combat ended in 1945, plastic became more widely available, and people were allowed to use it for non-military purposes. Christensen looked for ideas of how to incorporate plastic into his designs, and thought of a small toy that snapped together— he thought this would help children be more creative than simple wooden blocks. He purchased a plastic molding machine to help him make his vision a reality. The first set of Legos he made were called automatic binding bricks. He got them on the market in the late 1940s. The tiny tubes that hold Legos together were what set the product apart from other building toys. Ole and his son, Gottfried, filed the patent for the Lego at lunchtime on January 28, 1958. Ole died of a heart attack just a few months after the patent in March of 1958, at the age of 66. Gottfried took over when his father died, and he kept the company running in ship shape. Lego grew throughout the 1950s, and the revenue of the company rose. Throughout this time, Gottfried and his team continued to improve the design of the Lego to make interlocking them easier. The company began selling Legos in North America in 1961. Throughout the 1960s, Lego became super popular among Americans. They added things to the products, like wheels, different colors, and a variety of shapes. Part of Lego's enduring popularity is how the elements of the toy aren't just fun, they also help children learn. Legos have been proven to help kids with motor skills, creativity, teamwork, patience, and problem solving. In 1968, Legoland Park opened in Lego's founding city of Billund, which made Lego an even more well-known household name. The park had big models of well-known American cities, which wowed the people who would come to visit. Lego now has parks in England, California, and Germany. Between the parks, there are replicas of the Eiffel Tower, Mount Rushmore, and the Sydney Opera House, to name a few. The company kept expanding from there. They made boat and space sets, as well as sets for children as young as toddlers and older teenagers. In the 90s, Lego started partnering with pop culture entities like Star Wars and Harry Potter, which resulted in popular licensed collections. Lego was honored with the Toy of the Century Award by both Fortune Magazine and the British Association of Toy Retailers. Legos have been made at the same measurements since they were invented, and you can connect a Lego brick made today with the one made in 1958. Does anyone have a Lego from 1958 lying around so I can try this one out? Lego says that you'd need 40 million Lego bricks to reach the moon. I don't think that they'd do so well without gravity, but it's a fun fact nonetheless. In 2008, Copenhagen held an event for LEGO's 50th reunion, and Google honored LEGO by making the Google logo out of LEGO letters for the day. In 2012, LEGO made 45.7 billion bricks at a rate of 5.2 million per hour. They sure haven't slowed down since production began. Today, the brand is worth $6.2 billion. It's the fifth largest toy maker behind Mattel, Hasbro, Bandai, and MGA Entertainment. 62 LEGO bricks exist for every person on the planet. Six eight-stud bricks can be combined in a whopping 900 million different ways. I'll take their word for that one. 
Today, in 2020, Doja Cat released Say So, the fifth single from her second album, Hot Pink. TikTok helped the song gain popularity after user Haley Sharp, otherwise known as Yodeling Haley, made a dance to the song that went viral. Doja Cat went on to get three nominations for the song at the MTV Music Awards and two Grammy nominations for Record of the Year and Best Solo Pop Performance. I personally remember taking time out of my day to learn Haley's dance. I love Haley. She's wonderful. Um, obviously one of the most iconic creators on TikTok as a whole when it comes to influencing musical taste and especially with a song like Say So, but she has done it countless other times with different dance chains. And I love Say So. Hot Pink is a great album. Doja Cat knocked it out of the park. And now for our final segment of the day, I'm going to go into my own photo archives to see what I was up to on a January 28th in my life. Okay, so <laughs> this is so funny. I really hope the guy that this is about doesn't listen to this podcast. I highly doubt that he does. On January 28th, 2019, I did a question and answer on my Instagram stories where somebody asked me the question, boyfriend at the moment? And I responded with, never had a serious boyfriend. Ha 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 ha. I have since then have dated men, but and had boyfriends. But I <laughs> I remember posting that and I was thinking about it, and I got a reply from the guy, one of the guys I dated in high school, <laughs> where he said <laughs> he responded with LMAO. Oof. <laughs> and I responded with, I still appreciate you. It was a legendary moment to be asked out on Steam because when I dated him, he sent me a message through the Steam messaging client. And if you don't know what Steam is, it's a video game app that has a social networking feature element to it. And they have a, a message feature. And I remember he asked me out through that feature, not to my face, not through text, but through the Steam message client. And we didn't date for a very long time. It was like when I was a freshman. I don't even think we, like at that point, like I, we, I didn't call him my boyfriend. We were just dating for a period of time. Um, but I thought that was really funny that I had posted a answer about having a boyfriend just saying I've never had a serious one. And he responded saying that, <laughs> suggesting he was hurt by the response. <laughs> oh my God. But to the guy who I dated in high school, if you were listening to this, I still do appreciate you. You are great. I hope you're having, you're having a wonderful life. Um, I still think that's very funny. I have very fond memories of that experience. <laughs> Thanks so much for going back in time with me. And remember to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. You can come back tomorrow for more stories from yesteryear. It's 365 with MXM2. New facts every day, so... Don't leave too soon, I'm gonna teach you stuff No, it won't be tough, gonna go a year till you've had